Starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, whoever has already joined this webinar, this is Rick Ray, broadcasting from Bangkok, Thailand. And it's just gone 9 o'clock uh, Singapore, it's 8 p.m. here in Bangkok. And we'll go, be starting in just a couple of minutes, give time for a few latecomers to join us. Uh, just two or three minutes and we'll be starting tonight's webinar. Thank you for being patient. Okay, it's already getting a little bit past the hour now. Just going past 9 p.m. in Singapore and past 8 p.m. in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, just give me a yes if you can hear me. Uh, if you type in the in the box there that you can hear me loud and clear. Okay, this is Rick Ray, and I am based in Bangkok, where we are broadcasting from for tonight's webinar on the 17th of May. 2018 and tonight's webinar will be about how to avoid big losses and how to increase profits but before I get started I would like to of course give a brief introduction of myself some of you don't know me and uh, maybe you do uh, but I would also first before I even get started like to thank very much uh, the support that we have from the Fullerton team uh, Kuhn Lewis who has helped to uh, it's our IT guy, I guess you would call him, helped to organize this webinar, stand by for all technical issues. And then, of course, the local support team that we have here in Thailand, Kun Mint and Kun Alice. And also Kun Tim is actually from Singapore, but he spends a lot of time in Bangkok. And these people are just great. The Fullerton support staff are just fantastic. And they help us all as traders, as IBs, to be successful uh, with Fullerton and with Forex trading. And I appreciate everything they do. And I'd also like to, of course, thank very much uh, Mr. Mario Singh, uh, our owner and CEO of Fullerton Markets, for providing this opportunity to have these gatherings, these, uh, these sharing times, uh, these learning times, uh, which benefit all of us. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, my name is Rick Ray. And as you can probably tell from my accent, I am from the United States but I live in Bangkok and I have actually lived in Thailand for uh, almost 30 years. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> I was only going to stay for six months, but uh, when I came here, I just found out that I loved Asia so much. I love, I love Thailand. I love Thai people. Uh, the culture is great. Uh, it's just a fantastic place. It's my home now. I've been here, you know, nearly 30 years and been back to the States uh, about three times for a visit, but this is my home now. Uh, I spent my career in Thailand as a scuba diving instructor. I used to own a, my own dive shop and uh, I sold that business and I'm now retired from diving. 
and I started to think about uh, building some kind of investment income or retirement income some 10 years ago and got into options trading on the New York Stock Exchange and that didn't work out very well I didn't like that very much because you know living in Thailand and trading on the New York Stock Exchange well the hours are just crazy and if you have a real job and have to get up in the morning uh, it was really really difficult and um, but uh, after I gave up options trading, got into Forex trading, and been trading Forex for several years. And one of the reasons I really love it is just because of the time freedom that I have. I can trade anytime, uh, Monday to Friday, as everybody knows, 24 hours a day. And that just makes it so much easier. And I've been doing this for several years now, and now I am full time. It's all that I do. I don't do anything else. I trade Forex when I have time. <laughs> I mostly teach. I'm a Forex coach. And I have students uh, almost uh, every single day and quite busy just teaching and providing workshops and occasionally a webinar like this. And um, so I have to really be careful that I do leave some time for myself to do my own trading. So let's get on into the uh, webinar. If you can hear me okay, go ahead, please. Uh, there's a few more people have come in now. Uh, type yes. If you have any problems, uh, let me know with the chat there. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just type the questions in, and I will try and look over and, and answer the questions as we go along. This is a very, very simple um, topic that we will cover tonight, a very, very important topic, but uh, simple in how I will explain it. And I try and speak slowly and clearly so that everyone can understand. I know that we have... Uh, Asian people here, some Thai people, and maybe English is not your first language. I understand that, and I try to speak slowly and clearly. If I speak too fast, just let me know, and I'll try to slow down. So what you will learn tonight, what we're going to look at, is a very, very simple strategy. And it's a strategy that I teach to my students, and it's a strategy that I use. And the two main things about this strategy, the goals in using this simple strategy, is how to protect your investment is the first thing and most important. I mean, come on, you work hard for your money, right? And you fund your broker with your capital and it's hard earned money. You don't want to lose it. How can you protect it? Uh, the, the Forex market is the largest financial market in the world trading billions of dollars trillions of dollars every single day and they don't care how hard you work for your money forex is not interested that you worked hard for your money they will take it from you uh, they don't care who you are they don't care how much money you've got or how much money you don't have so it's really important that you that you hang on and keep and protect that uh, capital investment so that you can continue to trade continue to make your money work for you and we will also look at how you can increase your profits. Uh, it's, you know, of course, the best way to protect your investment is don't trade. If you don't trade, you don't lose any money. But that's not the idea. That's not why you became a Forex trader. You became a Forex trader because you want to make money, make income. So we'll look at a technique that I use, that I teach, that will help you to increase your profits in your Forex trading. But now let me give you a warning. OK, I, I avoid negativity. I really don't like to be negative. But initially, when I start off here with this presentation to explain this strategy to you, it might sound a little bit negative and you might not like what you hear initially in the beginning. But I'm going to show you something that does work, that has proven results. And uh, just trust me, be patient to the end. This is not a long webinar, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. And, and hang in there till the end, and I think you'll be glad you did. So let me ask you this question. Why, why do most traders lose money? And we know that's a fact. When you come into Forex, that's, or you first heard from Forex, or you heard a seminar, you went to listen to some broker, or you've talked to a coach, everybody will tell you, you know, right from the beginning, that unfortunately, uh, most traders lose money 
And we know it's about, what, 90% or some people say 95%. It's really high. Most traders actually lose money. Well, why is that? I mean, this is the largest financial market in the world. Billions of dollars, trillions of dollars out there being traded every single day. And we just want to make a little bit, you know, just a little bit. But unfortunately, the fact is that most traders lose money rather than make money. Well, we know the reason for that. And you, maybe you've heard Mario give a seminar. He will tell you the same thing. Maybe you've heard other coaches talk about it. All financial experts will tell you the reason that most traders lose money is because they overtrade or they overlot or they make big trades, which, you know, three things here. And basically it's all the same thing. You make too big of a trade size. And when the trade side, when the trade goes against you, goes the wrong way, what happens? You lose money. And you're warned about that from the beginning, that, you know, it's the leverage that entices people. It's the leverage of Forex that makes it appear lucrative. But you are warned from the beginning that that can work against you. But for some strange reason, <laughs> people still tend to make too big of a trade size and then when it goes the wrong way they lose not a little bit of money but a lot of money well that doesn't really make too much sense does it why do why do most people over lot why do people trade too big of a lot size if you know that it could possibly work against you and you could you know the potential is there that you could lose a lot of money or even blow up your account why do most people still overlot? And I, I teach this till I'm blue in the face to all of my students about to be careful not to overlot. But people still do it. And it's just, it's just a fact of humanity. It's human nature. You can say people are greedy. And yeah, some, you know, everybody's not greedy. I mean, it's, everybody wants to have income. We all want to have extra money. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're greedy. But it's, it's human nature that we will make too big of a trade size because, you know, if you say, well, if you'll just be patient and go slow and in two, three, four, five years, you can replace the income you have from your job and you can trade full time. Well, nobody wants to wait two, three, four, five years. We want it now. I mean, unfortunately, that's just human nature. We, we want it today. <laughs> There's trillions of dollars out there being traded every day, and we want to make that $100 a day today or $500 a day today. We don't want to build up to it. We don't want to start slow. We don't want to go steady, steady. It's just human nature. So if most people overlot because it's human nature, what, what's, the, what's the solution? What, how, can we, how can we fix that problem? If we're over trading, making too big of a trade size and losing money because of that, and it's our nature to do that, how can we avoid that? What's the solution? There's got to be a solution. We've identified the problem. If most people lose money trading Forex, if most people trade too big of a lot size, the solution is simple. It's not rocket science, and it's what you know already. Use small lot sizes. But, <laughs> but nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to trade small lot sizes. And why is that? Well, let's just have a quick review of using small lot sizes and I'll keep flashing this slide up here as many times as I have to I keep like I say I teach this till I'm blue in the face it is so so important if you want to protect your hard-earned money if you want to increase your profits if you want to trade Forex for a long 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 time you must use small lot sizes this is simply the way it is it's the holy grail of trading this is the golden rule of trading you must use small lot sizes 
Okay, you got the point, <laughs> you small lot sizes. Now let's just, okay, I know everybody knows what a lot size is and you know how much it's worth, but let's just review this very briefly. One lot size for 10 pips equals how much? $100. 0.5 of a lot size, 10 pips, equals $50. 0.1 of a lot size, 10 pips, equals $10. And 0.01 lot size, 10 pips, equals $1. Now, what, am I, what do I mean when I say trade small lot sizes? Well, I will tell you, micro lots. Trade with micro lots. And that means 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, okay? A mini lot is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc. A standard lot is 1.0 or higher. When I say trade with small lots, I'm, I'm talking about micro lots, and I know you don't want to hear that. <laughs> Nobody wants to trade small lot size. Rick, you're, look at this, 0 0.01 lot size. That means if the price goes in my direction and I trade 0 0.01 lot size, if it goes 10 pips, I make $1. Ooh, that doesn't sound very interesting. That's not why you learn to trade Forex so you can make $1. Well, I know what you're thinking, and you might even be saying it out loud wherever you are. You say, I can't make very much money trading small lots. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you that that is simply not true. And it goes against human nature for you to accept that. For you to accept that this is a false statement it goes against human nature. We all think, I cannot make any money trading small lot sizes. That's what you say. Well, I have learned to say something different. What I say is that I can't lose very much money trading small lots. And isn't the goal to protect our investment? Isn't that why we trade? Well, you trade to make income, but if you, if you lose your capital investment, you're not going to be trading anything. You're not going to be making anything. So the primary goal is to protect your investment. You've got to get that as your number one priority. That that's what you must do is protect the capital that you have funded with your broker. And then from that, you can start to grow your account. But if you're trading big lot sizes and a trade goes against you and you make a big loss, you, you start losing, you start to blow up your account. And the only way you can avoid big losses is what? Trade small lot sizes. Have you got it yet? <laughs> it's the only way you can avoid big losses. Because let me ask you this. Do you know what time the market is going to start moving and really going? Do you know which way the currency pair is going to move? Do you always know what is the best currency pair to trade? Do you always know whether to buy or sell? Well, the answer is no, 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 no. You don't. You don't know what the market is going to do. The market is going to do what the market will do. It doesn't care how, who you are. It doesn't care how much money you've had, have, how much big your trade is, how small your trade. It doesn't care. The market's not interested. Now, I'm not saying the market is against you, but what I'm saying is that because we have all these unknowns, we have to be very, very careful with how we invest, how we trade, the size of the lot that we choose to trade with. And if you want to protect your investment, if you want to avoid big losses, you have got to use small lot sizes. So let me show you this simple strategy. I know that was a little bit negative, and I don't mean to be negative, but it's a fact. It's a fact, right, that most people lose money. And we know why most traders lose money is because they overlot.
So let me show you a simple strategy that I use to trade every single day, a simple strategy that I teach all of my students that they have success with that will help you to protect your capital and to avoid big losses and to increase your income. And at the end of this presentation, I will show you some actual results from my students. First of all, let's look at this chart. Now you write this down, okay? I know we're probably recording this and maybe we'll be able to send you the slides, I'm not sure, but it will help if you write it down. Number one, support and resistance is so important. Now, you can see on here these gray lines. I have dotted gray lines across the top there, and I have dotted gray lines here about in the middle, and then some more down at the bottom. These are my support and resistance lines. And all traders refer to these. All traders use these. They are critical. What do they do for you? Well, they tell you where the currency is going. And you've got to know where the currency is going. You can't just buy and hope that it's going to go to the moon or if it's going down, that it's going to go down to the bottom of the ocean. You have to have some target in mind and support and resistance provide you for that target. So you have a goal. When you make a trade, you have a goal. You know by looking at support and resistance where the currency is going to go. You look at this chart right here. You see this resistance line here? Well, the price came up there and stopped. Stopped right on the resistance line. And then it turned around and went back down. Now, this, this resistance line, I put manually. This is not from an indicator. It's not from a template. I put this manually, well, I don't know, two, three months ago. And this chart is from last week. Price always goes back to a previous point, a previous price point that it hit before. You see where it was coming up here, it came down and it stopped right on the support line, right on the support line. Then it tried to go up a little bit. We've got that long legged doji there. Then we've got another doji here. And then finally it did start to make a move and went up and stopped on the resistance line. So if I make a buy in here somewhere, I know where the price is going to go, at least as a minimum, it's going to go back to a previous price point. So that gives me something to aim for when I make a trade. So support and resistance is very, very important. Now, this webinar is not about how to how to set up your own support and resistance lines. If you don't know how to do that, it's quite simple. Uh, it, it takes about five minutes to set up all the support and resistance lines on any chart. It doesn't take long. It's very easy. Maybe I'll do a webinar on support and resistance in the future. And then you wrote down number one, support and resistance. Write down number two, choose your trading time. Don't just open your computer and look and you see some. Did you, did I lose my audio? Am I still here? Can everybody still hear me? Please give me a yes. Please give me a yes if you can hear me. Lewis, are you there? Can you hear me? I'm going, can everybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? Okay, I think I lost my connection there momentarily. But can everyone hear me now okay? If you can hear me okay, please type yes in the box. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking. Okay, you can hear. Good. Thank you, Kun Patana. Excellent. Okay, so we, number one, number one, support and resistance. And number two is choose your trading time. Do not just open your computer and you see some candles moving and you try to make a buy or a sell because you want to make income. 
you've got to choose your trading time. What's the best time for you to to which market do you want to trade? You see these these kind of gray white lines here. I got one on that side here on the left. I got one here on the right. This is when I go to work. Right there. That's the only time I trade. And this first white line, this is 6 p.m. in Thailand. It's 7 a.m. in New York. And that's when the uh, New York Forex, the United States Forex market opens at 7 a.m. And that's when I go to work. I don't trade over in here. That's in the afternoon. I'm probably teaching or maybe watching a movie or something. I'm not interested in what it's doing there. This is my trading time. This is when I go to work right here. OK, I don't care what happened over here. So at 6 p.m. in Thailand, I get ready to trade. I'm looking at my chart and I start to analyze and look and see what's going on. And then I will trade maybe for a couple of hours here. And this other line, this is about midday or noon in New York. OK. So at 6 p.m. in Thailand, 7 a.m. in New York, the market starts to open and traders start trading. And I I look at everything and I, I don't trade the first three or four candles. This is a 15 minute chart. I don't trade for the first 45 minutes or so. I let the market get established and then I wait to see the trend before I make any kind of a trade. So on this particular chart on this day, I would have made a long trade on this currency pair and got these three or four candles here. So choose your trading time is very, very important. If you want to trade uh, the London market, that's fine. That's up to you. If you want to trade the uh, U.S. market, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, but choose a trading time and be consistent and make that your trading time. Learn how the market moves during that time. Don't just open your computer and look at some candles and think you're going to buy or sell. That's gambling. OK, so number two, choose your trading time. And then plan your entry and exit points. The exit point I already told you should be your target area, your resistance, or if it's a short, it would be your support line. OK, that's your exit point. But how do you plan your entry point? Well, this is the same trade we just looked at, the same chart, exact same candles. But this one, uh, the market had already traded out on uh, onto the right hand side here. So if you're looking at this chart here, where do you make an entry? I analyze this when I come to work at 6 p.m. in Thailand. I analyze this and I see, well, the trend has been up. It's going down a little bit now, but the trend has been up. So I expect that the trend is going to continue to be up. That's my analysis. So I expect to be able to go long here somewhere. But where where do I go long? Where do I make the buy trade? Do I do it on this long legged doji here? Do I do it on this doji here? Well, that now we can see that it went up and but if I trade right here, that would be very, very aggressive. The market has not shown me any kind of a trend at all right here in the in the opening hour of the market. The first 45 minutes, there's no direction here. So I don't make a trade. What I do is I prepare my chart. This is my 6 p.m. Thailand, 7 a.m. New York time right there. And I see that the trend has been coming up. OK, it went down for a little bit there. No problem. I expect it to continue up. So I draw a trend line from the previous high across to that first hour. I let the first hour develop and then I want the market to show me which way it's going to go. And as soon as it breaks the trend line, then to me, that's confirmation that I can go long on this currency pair. OK, at least I have my first target is that first resistance line there. And sure enough, it got to that resistance line and then the currency pair reversed. Now, what if you look at this and you say, well, this is coming down here, Rick. So how do, why do you think why do you think that the market is going to go up? Well, one reason is because this is the US dollar Mexican peso and I've been trading it every day for more than a year. So I have a really good idea of which way it's going to go. But if you're not sure, if you think, well, it's, it's going on its downtrend now, so maybe it's maybe it's going to continue down. That's all right. Just draw your trend line underneath. This is the same chart exactly. 
Okay. If you're not sure, you see this and you think maybe it's going to be a downtrend, well, just draw your, your trend line from this lowest point here over here till it touches at least one more. It's got to touch two candles or three is even better like it does here. But this one developed later. And if it broke below that, if it goes, if it continues down and breaks below that, then I know I'm going to go short. OK, if you're not sure of the direction, you can draw two trend lines on there. That's fine. But having traded this currency every single day for more than a year, when I see this, I'm I'm really, really quite sure that the uptrend is going to continue at least until midday. And at midday, then it starts to do the reversal. This is, again, the U.S. dollar Mexican peso, and this is a live trade that I made uh, just the other day and I wanted to do the screenshot when I had the uh, the trades open you can see the lines here I've got two trades there now what I'm talking about here this is the next thing you need to write down you add to a winning trade add to a winning trade you see I trade you see the size of my lot 0 0.01 yeah why in the world would I do that let's go back here and look at this one why in the world I, I would make a, a, a buy a long trade here? Why not just do point one? Why not just do one lot? <laughs> because you don't know, you're not sure which way the market will continue to go. Why put all of your chips on the table on one trade? If it turns around and reverses and goes against you, you start losing a lot of money. So my initial trade on this one might be a 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. And I can show you on this one here, this first trade was 0 0.01. And I did it just after, this is a little bit different day, but it's the same thing. Okay, you got this upward trend. I know it's going to go up. I put my trend line across there. And when it broke the trend line, bang, time to go long. So right about in here, I went long on that. And then I got another bullish candle. So what did I do? I added to a winning trade because my tar my profit target is up here somewhere. It's not showing on the chart. So I add to a winning trade with another small lot. Maybe maybe increase that one a little bit. Maybe 0 0.02, maybe 0 0.03. OK, so if it turns and goes against me. I don't care if I lose one dollar, <laughs> if it goes 10 pips against me, 20 pips, 30 pips, 30 pips against me. How much would I lose? $3. Big deal. I don't care. But I don't want to lose $200 or $300. So I trade small lots and then I add to a winning trade as it goes up. Now, if this turned around and went against me, OK, I've got my stop loss there. Nothing to worry about. No stress. OK, no worries. But I think what some people tend to do, if this goes against me, we start moving the stop loss away. Oh, it's got to go back up. I, I was sure this is an uptrend. Look at that. Two bullish candles. That's going up. Oh, I'm sure it's but it's coming down now. Well, I'll just move the stop loss down. And then what happens? You lose more money. Don't move your stop loss. Once you have it set, don't move your stop loss. And there's nothing says that if this should turn around and go back down, I have to let it go to the stop loss. I can I can close the trade before it gets to the stop loss. And I usually do. If I see that this turns around and it comes back and it starts to break below the trend line here, if this starts to come down this way and breaks below the trend line, I'll close the trade. I don't have to wait till it gets to the stop loss. Panic, panic. Oh, my God, I'm losing money. Wait till it gets there. And then you, you feel bad. You can close the trade any time you want. If you think you made a wrong decision, if you can clearly see the trade is going against you, just close the trade. You can always, always get back into a trade if it goes the right direction. So add to a winning trade. Now, can you add to a winning trade how many times? Well, when this candle finishes and the next candle starts to be bullish, I'll add again. And sometimes, depending on where the profit target is, you can add three or four times to a winning trade. That's okay because you know 
you have your profit target, you have your resistance area, you know where the price is going to go. So you can add maybe two, three, or four times to a winning trade. Now, if you don't trade the US dollar Mexican peso, that's fine. Although it is available on Fullerton, the spread is a little bit high, but you need special techniques and procedures to trade the exotic currencies. And I teach all of my students how to trade those and they love it. They really like trading the US dollar Mexican peso. But if you're trading like gold, for example, gold is a good one to trade on Fullerton Markets because Fullerton Markets has uh, the best spread, the lowest spread on gold in the industry. So gold is really, really good to trade on Fullerton. Now here's an afternoon setup, okay? And this is where the projection was that gold entry price would be right about in here. And the profit target was up here. So I set my trend line from the previous high across here to just where the London market opened. Okay. If I was going to trade when the London market opened, it broke above the trend line. That's my entry point. All right. And then it starts to go up and every bullish candle I can add to a winning trade, small lot size. Okay. 0 0.03 is fine. Add to a winning trade. You don't add if you get a bearish candle, but you can add when you get a bullish candle if you're long. And then it didn't quite make it up to the profit target, but that's okay because you're moving your stop loss up and you can exit the trade anywhere you want. And in this trade on this day, you would have easily had uh, five or six additions to your initial winning trade. So very, very good profit on that one. Now this says about using signals. Uh, every day in the morning, I make a video of about two to three minutes in duration and I provide signals for all of my students. I actually post it on Facebook too and on my website on the blog. If you want to look at those, you can just go to my website or to my Facebook page. I do signals for the Euro US, for gold, uh, for the pound US, sometimes the pound Australian. And those are free, absolutely. Uh, if you want, I have my contact information at the end of this presentation. So if you want to go to my Facebook page and follow those signals, that's fine. That's fine. No problem. Now, let me show you that this system, this trade, this simple strategy trading does work. Here are some examples of trades using small lots. These are actual results. Look at the trade sizes. 0 2, 0 2, 0 2, 0 2, 0 2, 0 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 small trades, $22 profit. One losing trade, 92 cents. Do you care if you lose a dollar? No, it's no big deal. No stress. You make small trades, you don't worry about it. And if you add to the winning trades, that builds up and you make a nice little income. Well, that's only $22. You want to make more money than that. Well, here's some evening trading with the US dollar Mexican peso that I teach my students. And he, he followed exactly this simple strategy. First trade, 0 point, uh, 0 0.02. Next trade, adding to a winning trade, 0 0.03. Next trade, adding 0 0.04. Next trade, adding 0 0.05. And look at that, $3, $15, $14, $2 total for the day. $60 trading small lots. It can be done, but it's against human nature. We think, oh, I can't make very much money trading small lots. If you're making $60 a day as a beginning trader, and this is one of my students, if you're making $60 a day as a beginning trader, you're doing just fine and you will not have big losses. Look at this one, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, adding to the trades, okay, 0 0.01, a little bit bigger here. If you want to trade bigger, okay, total for the day, $55. And then down here, uh-oh, got a little bit of a problem here. Started off well, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 0 0.08, really increasing the trades, and then moving up to a mini lot, uh, 0.12. And what happened? I don't know. Was he getting a little bit greedy? 
Well, you can trade a mini lot. You can trade a standard lot if you want. That's fine, up to you. But you have to be prepared that if it goes against you, you are going to make a substantially bigger loss. Okay? And here's 9, 13, 20. Wow, five trades of profit completely wiped out with one losing trade. And that could have been avoided just by trading another small lot, maybe 0 0.02. I wouldn't even go to 0 0.08. 0 0.05 is big enough. Two, three, four of those, and you'll have plenty of profitable income. This is another student. And look at these trade sizes. 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.01. Wow, ah, amazing. $32 for the day. And this is a brand new student, just beginning, okay? And one losing trade, 12 cents. No big deal. But all small lot sizes, as small as it can possibly be, micro lots, and $32 profit. So, in summary, use a trend line for your entry point, you need a specific place that you're going to either go long or go short. Second, use support and resistance for a profit target. You need to know clearly where to get out of the trade. You need to know how far up is it going to go or how far down is it going to go so you have in other words you're planning your trade and you're trading your plan and this is exactly what Kun Kate talked about uh, on Tuesday night in her webinar she gave a fantastic webinar about how to plan your trade and again trade small lot sizes this is the holy grail it's the only way to avoid big losses. If you trade a big lot, you must be prepared to lose big money. I don't like to lose money. I don't like that at all. It's very stressful to trade a big lot. It's very stressful. I want to enjoy my trading. I want to relax. I want to place a trade and not worry about it, not care if it goes against me. And then you can increase your profits by adding to a winning trade. And the trades that I showed you, I add to winning trades using the 15 minute time frame. You can use any time frame you want, all right? The five minute time frame is a little bit too fast to try and add winning trades because it goes up and down a lot. And the 30 minute and the one hour is a little bit too slow for the price to develop. You can get a little, a little bit quicker uh, and a little bit more reliably uh, with a winning trade, adding to a winning trade on the 15 minute time frame. That's the time frame chart that I use for all of my trading. It's the 15 minute. Okay, here's my contact information. If you'd like to personally ask me some questions, I'm easy to contact online. Uh, my Facebook page is at FX Rick Ray. Uh, Instagram, if you want to see some photos, I don't post very much on there. I have my own website, rickrayfx.com. And if you go to the blog tab, you will see the signals that I post every day, uh, usually before noon in Bangkok. And you can email me at rick at rickrayfx.com. So if anybody has any questions, I don't see any questions. I hope I spoke slowly enough and clearly enough for everyone to understand. And I really appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention. And I hope this has helped you a little bit to have some idea of how you can protect your investment, protect your capital, and avoid big losses. We know why traders mostly lose is by overlot. And we know the solution is by simply trading smaller lot sizes. Okay, very good question. Uh, can't see your name, but the EMAs, you saw two EMAs on my chart, 
and uh, I used the yellow one was an 8 EMA and the green one which I don't look at very much is a 3 EMA I mostly use the 8 EMA any other questions thank you for that question very very good question and I have used those EMAs for a couple of years that's my chart I don't have all these indicators on there Bollinger Bands Andrews Pitchfork Fibonacci you know all of that stuff <laughs> I started out trying to trade with those but I got confused and I couldn't understand them and I lost a lot of money so I, I took all the indicators off and I just started with candlesticks and I, I do price action trading you saw I do have the stochastic oscillator uh, which I just look at to give me the kind of the big picture of overbought or oversold um, but I don't trade on the stochastic all right I, I read the candles that that's what I trade by is the the price action who's in control of price uh, e either the buyers or the sellers it's got to be one or the other and then I look for the trend uh, because as we all know the trend is your friend and I always try to uh, trade with the trend counter trend trades are okay but they can be quite difficult uh, I've found that they don't last very long whereas a trend will tend, tend to go uh, much further many more candles and uh, much bigger profit when you're trading with the trend any other questions okay if not thank you very much for joining me tonight I really appreciate it and uh, if you add me on Facebook or line I'll be glad to uh, chat with you if you have any questions or just to add you as a friend thanks very much for being here Are you done? Uh, yes, Lewis, thank you very much. I am done. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thanks to you too, and thanks you to everyone. All right, uh, we'll end this here. Good night, everyone.